up, chooms? How y'all living? Hope everything is Nova and you're all having a preem week. Well, in the comments to my last video, one of my viewers brought up a company called DeNovo, which is developing a hair loss cure. Yeah, like we haven't heard that one before, right? Anyways, as a hair loss witcher myself, it is my job to use my witcher senses to investigate such claims, so I went over their website to check it out. So, you can see it's a pretty slick website. It has huge, high-resolution, professional-looking photographs. It kind of reminds me of Tesla's website, in fact, except they are using models instead of cars. But it looks like what their mission is, is to market and fund a cure for hair loss in development that is based on stem cell therapy technology. So, we've been hearing about stem cells for a long time now. What they are are basically just generic prototype cells that can turn into any specific cell type in the body. So, you can think of stem cells as like a base clay, you could then mold into any tissue you want, which gives it a tremendous amount of medical utility. Theoretically, a stem cell could be programmed to convert into a blood cell, a neuron, or a skin cell, or any other type of cell imaginable. There are stem cells in the skin, and some of these stem cells are specifically meant to regenerate hair follicles. In fact, with every hair cycle, hair follicle stem cells are crucial for regenerating the hair and restarting the hair cycle again. In this figure here, you can see the hair cycle. Starting at the top, we see the antigen growth phase divided into early, middle, and late antigen. At the end of the antigen growth phase, there is the catagen transition phase where the hair follicle shrinks and the hair stops growing. After that, we have the telogen resting phase where the hair just sits inactive until it just finally sheds out. But what actually causes that shedding is the fact that the dermal stem cells located at the base of the hair follicle become active and basically a new hair follicle is created, which restarts the antigen growth phase. These stem cells, or potential cells, can even form whole new hair follicles, as you can see in this figure right here. So the goal of this de novo company is to use these cells to regrow hair. Their website gives the impression that this is very easy, in fact. In fact, de novo thinks that all this can be done following just these five easy steps. Step one, collect cells at their on-site facility. Step two, use de novo's top secret formula to reprogram the cells. Step 3. Hair producing cells are generated. Step 4. Put those hair producing cells into the scalp. Step 5. Hair growth is visible in 1-3 to three months. Sounds easy, doesn't it? Well, not so fast, Jones. There's one rather suspicious step that set off my bullshit meter, and that's step number two. This is the step where de novo uses its proprietary formula to convert the harvested cells into hair-growing stem cells. Here's the key step from their website. Yes, the claim is, quote, for the first time, we can solve the root cause of hair loss permanently. We do this with our reprogramming technology developed by our team of Stanford PhD scientists." Unquote. So supposedly, by using just a piece of skin or a few drops of blood and then adding in the mysterious de novo factors, this company claims they can generate your own personalized hair stem cells that can then be used to generate new hair. So where's the research supporting all this? Well, you won't find that on the de novo website. In fact, what de novo is trying to do, which is reprogramming cells to become hair follicle stem cells, is quite a complex process and has not actually been achieved by anyone yet. As this recent review article on hair follicle regeneration says in its conclusions, quote, Since it is architecturally and functionally complex organ, the hair follicle is much more difficult to regenerate or reconstruct than many other organs. Due to this limitation, hair follicle regeneration is still far from clinical transformation, unquote. So if you try to search for research done by the de novo company, you find that all the articles online about the company have to do with the business side of the company. For example, there's this article here that's titled, quote, de novo emerges from stealth with its potential cure for hair loss, unquote. In it, we learn that de novo is a Silicon Valley startup that has received $2.7 million in seed funding. We also see a picture of a mouse variety called a hairless mouse with a tuft of hair supposedly grown from de novo's induced hair stem cell. Here's another article on the same subject, which appears to show the same mouse. These are supposedly human hairs, but if that's actually the case, then this mouse must also be totally immunosuppressed, because under normal circumstances, foreign tissue like human hair follicles would be rejected by a normal mouse because of a mouse's T-body cells, which would recognize it as a foreign invader and then kill it. Even the author of the article seems skeptical. He says, quote, Result of a transplant of what the company says are human hair stem cells. 
unquote. It turns out that there are dozens of companies working on this kind of stem cell research, and these companies attract millions and billions of dollars of investment income. De Novo is just one of these many companies. The article states De Novo has been able to grow human hair on a mouse, but there is no indication yet that they have been able to do the same thing in a human being. So is any of this encouraging news? How close is De Novo to getting their stem cell technique to work in humans? Well, Chooms, unfortunately, there is a reason that animal research is at the very bottom of the pyramid of scientific evidence. Although mice are frequently used as a model for human hair research, mice are not humans, and there are many differences in mouse hair physiology versus human hair physiology. This article here goes through some of the differences between mice and men. Here you can see in this figure that while humans have two types of hair, which include large pigmented terminal hairs and small non-pigmented vellus hairs, mice on the other hand, have at least seven different types of hair. Also, mice have a synchronized hair cycle that lasts just two weeks, while human hair cycles last normally three to six years. Though with androgenic alopecia, the hair cycle becomes much shorter than this, which along with the subsequent miniaturization of each hair cycle, is the reason why androgenic alopecia causes hair loss. Speaking of androgenic alopecia, mice don't get it at all. Their hair follicles are totally resistant to the deleterious effects of the trash hormone DHT as opposed to humans where scalp hair in those genetically predisposed to it is destroyed by DHT. So if you want to cure hair loss, just become a mouse, bro! Also, on that note, there are differences in the type as well as the location of hair follicle stem cells in mice hair versus human hair. Finally, mouse hair is very thin with only three layers, while human skin is thicker with more layers. All this is just to point out that if a hair loss drug works in a mouse or stem cells regrow hair in a mouse, that doesn't necessarily translate into hair growth in human beings. In fact, although mice have been very useful in working out the mechanisms of the hair cycle, they haven't been very useful in developing hair loss therapies for humans. As this article points out here, quote, in fact, the FDA-approved drugs for hair loss treatment available so far, finasteride and minoxidil, were identified based on their side effects on human hair growth during clinical trials and not from studies in mice. It is thus possible that many hair treatment solutions developed over the past years and or still under development may fail due to the inadequacy of animal models." Unquote. So the point is, don't celebrate too soon here, Chooms. We're not mice, and just because something works in a mouse doesn't mean it's going to have good results in humans. This stem cell research may sound promising, but the research done so far in it doesn't even come close to resembling anything that can resemble a treatment for hair loss. In fact, I probably would just forget about this de novo company altogether, because if Silicon Valley has taught us anything over the past several years, it is that they are not trustworthy. They tend to over-amplify, over-promise, and over-hype in order to drive up their market value in the stock market and get venture capitalists to invest in their company without solid data that their products work, because frankly, they don't need to prove their products work. If a con woman like Elizabeth Holmes can become a billionaire by just selling an idea, so can other people, even if that idea is based on unproven, secretive, proprietary data. The fact that de novo wants to protect their proprietary process in order to keep their research secret stands in conflict with science, which really should be an open forum for the exchange of ideas, but we don't see that because this isn't a scientific endeavor. It is a business venture, and it holds the potential to get its founders very rich, even if the product ends up being a complete failure. Now, I don't dismiss stem cell research completely, but the science and technology just aren't there yet. Conversations about ideas like stem cells, hair cloning, or gene therapy are very interesting, but they're conversations we should be having 50 15 years from now at least, because as it stands today, these treatments are just not practical for present day hair loss sufferers. So please, leave the discussion about future speculative treatments to your grandchildren and focus on what we know works, which is stopping the trash hormone DHT. I don't discount the possibility that some new breakthrough will occur in the coming several years, but that's not going to do you any good if you wind up with a shiny toilet seat ring around your scalp, so please chooms. Don't delay. The cure for hair loss already exists. It's called getting on finasteride and maybe minoxidil before it's too late. So with that, thank you, Chooms, and I'll see you all next time. Take care.